We are the strategy by which the Father has chosen to reveal himself on the earth. I am Liz Wright. Welcome to Live Your Best Life. The only thing that matters now is living by the power of this wonderful new creation life. We're going to become an undefeatable force of radiating glory, and we are rising up strong now in this hour. Hi, family. Thank you for tuning in to what's going to be just an amazing conversation in this week's episode of Live Your Best Life with, of course, Mila's Right. And joining me for today's conversation is just the most beautiful, beautiful, authentic man of God. He is the pastor, the senior pastor of Seattle Revival Center, which is now known as Eden. It is just, if you haven't been there, you have to go. They host the presence of Jesus there. And it's just a family of authentic, supernatural people. He is himself a supernaturalist and he's a, he creates amazing media content and he's always a television presenter. There's just so many things that he's involved with. And he is now the author of the most amazing, seriously important new book. And it's called Unapologetically Supernatural, which you're going to hear more about today. It is, of course, the one and only amazing Darren Stott. Darren, welcome. <laughs> Liz right. So good to see you. And uh and once again, your 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 introduction is making me blush. So this is not <laughs> this is not makeup. This is me blushing. <laughs> I mean every word of it. And I am super excited about your new book. I mean, the revelation and the content in there is just so important. I know you guys out there, you are hungry to walk in the fullness of who we are as supernatural people, the fullness of relationship with Jesus, our authentic design. And this book, Darren, it contains so much of the blueprint. It puts in front of us, doesn't it, the truth of who we actually are as supernatural people. And not just that, it it's like it kind of when I was reading it, I was feeling like you were taking me by the hand and taking me deep into keys that bring us forth, being able to steward the miraculous, you know, and le- really understand who we are and why we're here. So, okay, so deep dive. Question number one, you start to talk in the book about when God created everything and from the book of Genesis and he said it was good and you you explained the Hebrew meaning of the word translated into English as good, which I didn't know. It's so profound, the meaning of that and how clearly like now we look around and we see things are not as they're supposed to be, you know, as the Lord originally intended. So can we start there? Will you speak to us a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, Solomon would say that the Lord has embedded into our hearts, right, into our DNA, the record of eternity. And so for people that are listening today, whether or not they uh, subscribe to the gospel of the kingdom through Jesus Christ or they're involved in uh, some other form of spirituality, we would say that biblically that your DNA carries the resonance of Eden, of heaven, that there's something internal that longs for long walks with God in the cool of the day uh, in uh, in the garden. And yet we're a part of a world where that garden dynamic doesn't seem to exist anymore. And as we're living our lives, as we're watching what's happening in the nations, as we're going to work and having water cooler conversations, we find ourselves saying, like, this is not the way it ought to be. Mm-hmm. And there is a... Uh, a a religious theology that says, um, that's right. Okay. Everything is absolutely messed up. Uh, but don't worry, uh, because Jesus is coming. Okay. And he's going to get us all off of this place. So just bunker down. Okay. Just survive. Okay. Because, you know, because, uh, the church is going to go up. Right. And, um, but what I think is interesting is that when you're, when you're looking at, uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ, uh, we have this incredible good news that God so loved the world that he sent his son to live, die, resurrect, and then send his spirit uh, to occupy us. Not so that we can just wait to die to get off of this place, but so that we can go into all the world and bring about the restoration of of heaven. And so for people listening today, uh, uh, man, we're super excited to 
to propagate the gospel of the kingdom. And that is the kingdom of heaven is at hand and that the messed upness of this culture is really just a beautiful opportunity for the church to arise and shine and actually make things right. Yeah. That was one of the things that impacted me when I was reading the book. There's a real anointing on it. To sh- you feel yourself shifting, don't you, from, like you said, hunkering down, living in the pain, avoiding difficulties, waiting to be beamed up out of here, to actually I am a child of God, I am an image bearer, and I am here not to react but to reflect God and bring his presence and bring his voice and all these challenges truly to begin to partner as supernatural people to in the restoration and fulfillment of all things and to radiate Christ as the solution into these massive issues that we face, whether it's personal in our own lives or corporately. And I could feel it. It's like there's a there was a strength rising up inside me. It was like I was being reconvinced again. Yeah, Jesus is getting his dream. Like it's really happening. Like the original ma- the original vision he had when he was creating Earth, when he was creating us. You know, I I was reconnecting to that. It was very powerful. And so, but obviously, a lot of us are stuck, right? A lot of us are stuck. We're stuck in pain. We're stuck in our history, the impact of our history. But we are clearly here to steward his presence. It's, you know, I think he's really awakening us, hey, Darren, to the, and stripping away the religion, like you said, and bringing us back to the pure undiluted gospel of the kingdom again and the original mandate and it's i mean i know i'm going through this you obviously your book is talking about this as other friends of ours and prophets prophetic voices everybody seems to be getting hungry for the authentic and this like rising inside of us to press in to be able to be this supernatural expression that you're talking about which is i think the book is so on time because you give us language for i think what many of us are feeling like we're pressing in to see us stop reacting and actually set the atmosphere and set the culture and be who we are. So will you speak to us a little bit about to get us from where we are to this, (laughs) to this, which um, is the truth? (laughs) Like, how do we start to get unstuck and move in the miraculous? Yeah, isn't it interesting, the intensity of the buffeting, the intensity of the emotions that we feel when it comes to... um, how the enemy will bring reminder of our own shame, uh, the the sense of overwhelm in regards to fear, uh, the yeah. the betrayals that we have to face. Uh, it sometimes it feels like the very place that we're going to seek healing and restoration is the place that we find brokenness. Kind of speaking of um, the church, and uh, for many people that are that are watching, it's it's almost like how do I do? relationship and intimacy with Jesus? How do I do encounter? How do I, you know, how how can I be a part of this restoration process on the earth? But how can I do it in a, in a safe way? Because I've just been, I've been, I've been so hurt. And, and not only that, but the intensity, the spiritual intensity, the practical intensity, the marital, parental intensity, the political intensity, right? Uh, 2024, come on somebody, <laughs> right? right. And and we're looking at this saying, how does how does this all work? And uh and it, what I would say is I want to remind everybody today that we are the strategy by which the Father has chosen to reveal himself on the earth. And I was uh, we're studying Revelation right now in in, in Eden. And when most people think of Revelation, they think, you know, Christ the King, uh, Jesus seated on the throne, the throne room, which absolutely, yes, come on. Uh, but it's interesting, when John gets caught up in his first vision, uh, he, he doesn't initially go into the throne room. Uh, when John gets caught up into his first vision, uh, he hears the voice from behind and he turns to see the voice, which is interesting. And when he And when he turns to see Jesus, if you will, he sees the seven golden lampstands, which is the church, the church in its fullness, seven for fullness, the lampstands, the seven spirits of God, the lamps on the lampstands. And so the very first thing that he sees when he hears the voice of Christ is the body of Christ. And then there in the midst of the church is Jesus. And he's not seated on a throne. He's standing. And he's not dressed like a king. He's dressed like a priest. 
and priests, you know, in the old covenant wouldn't sit, they would stand. So what do we see? We see Christ, the priest standing amongst his church, serving his church, saying, I love you. I know the persecution that you're facing. I know the intensity of the hour. And here is Jesus and he is serving the vehicle by which he has employed to reveal and to represent himself. That's the, the purpose. That's the reason behind the intensity. The enemy is doing everything possible to buffet the very bride, the ecclesia, the mystery, um, the body. And I'll just remind everybody uh, listening, uh, you are the representation um, strategy of the father to, to, to disclose, to unveil. Uh, uh, the mystery of heaven, the beauty of the Trinity on the earth. And that's the reason for the intensity. And I hope that gives a real sense of of purpose and, and identity. And, a, and, a, and, and I also hope it also creates a sense of urgency, uh, even within this conversation of the supernatural, that the supernatural is not a luxury. It's a necessity to reveal the fullness of who he is on the earth. Yeah, just brilliant. Just brilliant. Guys, you see what I mean? Like, <laughs> this is what happens to you when, when you're reading the book. It's like a charge happens inside of you and you start to rise up and it just resonates. It's like, yeah, this is who we are, not the way that we've been feeling completely overwhelmed in our soul as we're reacting to life, to the pressures of life and to our history. But this is actually who we are and we really are being reset. There's something that you said, I've got to read it, and it's completely in line with what you've just said. And I sat in it for ages, Darren. I was like, man, that's the truth. And it's what's going on. You say in your book, Holy Spirit is raising up a priesthood. It's what you're saying, but it's a different language again for a similar revelation. Holy Spirit is raising up a priesthood in this hour to operate as they as the literal body and authority of Jesus on earth giving him a voice and presence here it's like wow wow i mean just let the revelation there drop into your spirit as power this is who we are this is who we are and i can feel it like unsticking us moving us forward releasing fresh perspective that like we're the priestly bride we, we are, we're awakening to governing. Finally, like not just pockets of us throughout history, but the bride's rising, the body of Christ awakening, isn't it? Yeah, amen, amen. You know, um, within our culture, you know, the top selling books, the highest grossing movies, um, it, it's all supernatural based. Yeah. And it, it and it resonates globally. These films and in, in this literature, uh, it does equally as well no matter what nation um you you go to in fact it's interesting because you know 20 years ago the leading influencers with, within our culture were guys like dawkins and hitchens these radical atheists and our culture was very kind of secular in its operation and now you look at the leading influencers within our generation people like joe rogan uh tim ferris russell brand uh mm -hmm. these people that are not secular at all in fact they're very spiritual they're, they're very open about their curiosity uh, mm -hmm. and their conviction that there is more out there. So our generation is 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 desperate to mm -hmm. discover God's original blueprint uh, yeah. for for the universe, for the earth and, and for our purpose. And I think that when it comes to the approach of the supernatural uh, within the greater culture, uh, this you know sociologists are calling, um, the, the culture that we're living in, the uh, an enchanted uh, society or a magical society, and that uh, that our generation has an openness to spirituality. And I think one of the things that's that's happened, uh, I'd be curious to get your 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 insight on this as well, is that the the methodology of this of the world pertaining to the supernatural has kind of assimilated into into the church. In that, outside of Christ. Uh, well, I'm thinking of of the old be you know the the bewitched TV show back in the '60s, where you have a housewife with superpowers who could you know uh, wink her eyes and the dishes would be done, and and I and I think that there is this 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 
curiosity around hacking the supernatural so that it can serve us and our daily activities and the operations of our of our soul. Whereas I think that when you look at the ministry of Jesus, Jesus as, as the pattern priest, if you will, when he came, uh, he did not come to be served and nor do we see him exploiting or hacking the supernatural uh, so that he can, uh, you know, escape pain, but he embraced the pain and he, and he utilized and stewarded the supernatural in order to bring relief, healing, and restoration uh, to others. And I think that that's a massive um, contrast between a worldly supernatural and and the gospel of the kingdom. This the super yeah. the, re, the the redeemed uh, supernatural is that it doesn't exist at the end of the day to serve us. It doesn't exist for us to be able to hack the universal laws of the universe so that we can have a better day or do the dishes faster. Um, These things exist so that we can love mercy, do justice, right? So we could subvert the plans, the attacks of the enemy, the effects of the curse, bring relief and restoration to others in the same way that Christ uh, modeled uh, throughout the Gospels. Yeah. And I think as we begin to really come forth at this next level now as supernatural people revealing Christ, really re- revealing pure supernatural power, mm. you know, because it's who we are. It's an expression of who we are. It's actually our identity, isn't it? Amen. I think the the people who are searching, people who are hungry for the more, they will see the authentic. The world wants authentic. And so it's really important that we become our authentic selves now. We express Christ from our union with him. There's something that you said, Darren, and I thought in your book, it's one of the phrases you use, and I thought, that's amazing. Talk to us about shalom and superheroes. So I was just, when you said about justice then, we're doing the works of justice. What does that mean from heaven's perspective, you know? And then it just reminded me, I thought, oh, yeah, yeah, I want to go there. Well, you talk to us about that language because I think it's a brilliant language to explain where Holy Spirit's taking us. Yeah, well, again, what we tried to do is we tried to, with, with this book, with this project, to make it a very kind of practical, uh, you know, how to walk in healing, right? The, the, the number one reason why people don't get healed, um, how to walk in the dream realm without getting involved in some stuff, you know, some yeah. tricky stuff. Um, it. And, but what we wanted to do was we wanted to create a biblical theology for the purpose of the supernatural. And so as we've already been discussing, in the beginning, everything was perfect and beautiful and pure and glorious. Uh, it was presence. It was intimacy with the Father. Then after the fall, then everything that was beautiful, everything that was glorious and, uh, you know, where where you had uh, food, eating as worship, now all of a sudden Food becomes a drug, right? Same thing for 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 wine. Uh, you have something that the Lord has created, a, 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 a covenant drink that all of a sudden becomes a vehicle of escape for for so many. And so for people to understand that shalom is the way that things uh, were meant to be, that in Eden, you had shalom, you had prosperity of soul, prosperity of body, okay? No sickness, no disease, no fear, no, no emotional um, uh, uh fracturing, right? What people don't realize is that uh, when eyes are healed, okay, some people would say that that's a violation of the natural order of things, okay? Uh, the supernatural, right? It, it's it's imposing a heavenly reality, but that's not, that's not true. Uh, that whenever we see a miracle, okay, whenever we see the supernatural power of God at work, that is not an imposition of, of a heavenly reality, Okay, being pressed down onto our onto our situation for for uh, for the better, right? This is a restoration of the natural order of things because eyes were meant to see, right? Legs were meant to walk, right? We were created to be joyful, to live in peace and harmony uh, with God. So even uh, 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 leading somebody to the Lord is bringing their soul back into uh, shalom. 
And when we do this, the Hebrews understood that justice was the process of restoring goodness, restoring order, restoring shalom. And this is the plot line of every superhero movie. It's a situation where peace has been compromised, where order has been compromised, where the safety and security of the earth has been compromised. And you have people freaking out because they feel powerless and they're saying, ah, somebody's got to do something. And then thank God it's a bird. No, it's a plane. No, it's Superman. And he comes to save the day. I think this is a picture of, of the church in the midst of the culture. We see all of uh, we see our uh, all of these dynamics that threaten to be compromised or have been compromised. And I think the culture is saying, ah, somebody needs to do something. You have the Republicans saying, and that somebody is Trump. It's a bird. No, it's a plane. No, it's Donald Trump, right? And then you have other people say, oh, God, no, I hope he's not our savior, right? And, uh, and so, uh, uh, when we look at the, <laughs> when we look at the word of God, we see that this is exactly what Jesus did, that Jesus would co- always find situations where justice, uh, where there was a, a lack of justice, where shalom had been compromised and he would come and he would, and he would use the supernatural, uh, to reweave that peace and to reweave that order. And that's where I feel like there's a modern day a uh, company of superheroes uh, where they're just doing their ordinary lives. They're at the go- they're at the grocery stores. They're at the schools. They have Christ Jesus, the hope of glory inside of them. And they're seeing situations. And, the, and, and unlike others who, who would feel powerless and say, somebody needs to do something, uh, when confronted uh, with, with the aspects of, of the fall, when confronted uh, with, with, this, with the powers of darkness that want to compromise peace, we would say, hey, somebody does need to do something, uh, that somebody is us. We've been given the mighty, glorious Holy Spirit, and this is just an opportunity to make things right. This, uh, those eyes were meant to see. Uh, that little girl was meant to be happy, was meant to have a home. Uh, that, 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 you know, and so all of a sudden we're going to start seeing our cities different because the problems we'll see are actually just opportunities to see his kingdom come, right? To see his, his will be done, to see, uh, earth look more like heaven. Yeah. It's such a brilliant, empowering lens to see life through it. You, I can really feel myself strengthening and changing, listening to you just wanting to you just see that you see situations completely differently don't you the challenges that are in front of us become those opportunities to release heaven's justice like you say to bring the state of eden on earth the kingdom of god on earth where there's no more sickness and there's no more demonic stronghold damaging and destroying a person's life and on and on it goes and that's of course the ministry of jesus continuing on through through his beloved, who is he, he is now living inside of. I mean, just amazing. It's a brilliant lens, like I said. Okay, so Darren, I want to ask you to get super practical because I know you do okay. that okay, okay. <laughs> so well. Okay, <laughs> for those of us that are just like jumping up and down going, yeah, yeah. How do we move forward to begin to flow in partnership with Holy Spirit to see miracles happening? Yeah, absolutely. How do we step into this ministry more effectively? Yeah, uh, and and that's why I'm so excited about this this project, uh, this book, because right off the bat, we need to awaken people to their supernatural identity in Christ. All yeah. right, and that means that we really have to deal with comparison uh, and 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 sometimes even jealousy. Uh, we hear these incredible stories of people on YouTube that are going to heaven and um, and 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 had an encounter at the age of three where an angel carried them into this dynamic and they ate a golden scroll and and then and then and I'm like and, and people are listening to these stories thinking. My, I don't have a birth story like William Branham or like Bobby Connor. And so I must not be uh, supernatural like them, right? So we've got to deal with comparison. The other thing we have to deal with mm-hmm. is discouragement. Um, when we look at our own past and we see all of these times when when God didn't heal somebody, when we lost somebody that was important to us, when somebody that we trusted told us something and um, and they didn't follow through, we have uh, all these opportunities for discouragement where if we're not careful, we will become our own self-engineers and we'll begin to 
uh, structure a lifestyle where we can control the outcomes because that's where we're finding safety and security. But in doing so, um, we're actually forfeiting the opportunity to walk in the supernatural power of Christ Jesus. And so that's that, that's the tension that we have to lean into in the book. I ask people like, I thought this was a supernatural book. It's a bit like the Karate Kid. I thought you were going to teach me Kung Fu and you ta- taught me how to paint your deck. Like, uh, Darren, why are we having these conversations about areas of hurt within my past? Why, why do we have to talk about trust? Why do we have to talk about areas where we, where we loved in the past and we were hurt and now we've shut our, 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 our love capacity down or our ability uh, to love? And, uh, and, and I love what Bobby Connor says. He says, the heart of the matter is the matter of the heart. And mm-hmm. so what we'll find is that as we can begin to walk through some of the areas of the soul, as we can begin to forgive and release, all of a sudden, there will be a willingness to have a life with Jesus where the outcome is out of our control and we're okay with that. Where we're willing to pray for somebody and whether or not they get healed, it, that doesn't matter. Uh, because we love Jesus and because we love people, we're going we're going to fight for people, knowing that the outcome at the end of the day is out of our out of our control. And I think that the supernatural lifestyle is not a lifestyle of 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 perpetual inevitable victories. The supernatural lifestyle is a lifestyle of surrender, where you're willing to trust Jesus even when even when your heart continues to get broken and even when you're continuing uh, to take risk and, and it didn't turn out the way you thought it would turn out. And so this is an invitation uh, for people to, uh, for people to uh, forgive, uh, for people to learn to trust Jesus again so that we can go forward really loving people regardless of what comes back uh, our direction. And, uh, and then therefore, like, we'll pray for people and, um, and, and no matter what happens, they're going to feel loved and we're going to feel the reward of that. And so, yeah, I, I'm just encouraging people, uh, let's, 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 let's inspect our hearts to see where, uh, uh, where, we've, where we've established a religious security or a crutch so that we don't really have to hear his voice. We don't really have to obey his voice. But let's repent of that. And then let's really commit to be a supernatural people. Yeah, it's just brilliant. And I love that, that you bring that balance in the book of presenting to us the vision from the book of Genesis. This is what the original intention was. This is the original blueprint of who you are. This is the work of Holy Spirit right now. And in order for us to become the full authentic expression of who we actually are as supernatural people as the superheroes to begin to administrate the justice of heaven on earth this is the part the practical steps to get unstuck like you said just to be able to and to free up our hearts to get to to get rid of the past and the impact of the past and start and step into the brand new day through this invitation that the lord's extending to all of us and then that grace the grace, the supernatural empowerment to live in the fullness of who we are just begins to move through us, doesn't it? It's just profound. Oh my gosh, it's just profound. And it's time and we're all being invited. (laughs) We're all on planet Earth by God's design right now to partake in this. Yeah, amen. You know, one of the the things I was thinking about um, was in the comparison thing. Uh, and yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure, uh, Liz, you've seen this as well when you're mentoring people, you know, people say, I don't, I don't hear God's voice. I've never seen, I wish I could see Jesus. Like Liz is seeing Jesus. Right. And all of a sudden we begin asking people questions about their childhood and, um, mm-hmm. ask Holy Spirit to show you, um, the angels that you saw when you were a child, ask the Holy Spirit to show you the demons that the, those, 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 those encounters, uh, ask Jesus to remind you of when he revealed himself, I believe that every person has actually seen Jesus. I think we just didn't have, we just weren't able to discern the data or we just compartmentalized it and put it in a box. So uh, every person that's watching, you are absolutely radically supernatural, created in the image and likeness of a supernatural God with an incredible supernatural identity and destiny. We just got to cut through the disappointment and some of the religious filters so that we can get our expectancy turned back up. I love it. It's like the word says, isn't it? Eternity, God has put eternity in men's hearts. We holy, waha, 
yes. <laughs> I felt yeah. Holy Spirit leap there and he was like, yes. That's the truth. That going back to what you said at the beginning, you know, eternity is inside of our hearts. You know, we are supernatural people. It is just who we are. And we're awakening to the reality of that, tuning in and becoming aware now of that truth to be able to move and flow in Holy Spirit in oneness, in oneness with Him. Darren, just in finishing, would you pray for people? Just like yes. move yeah. us forward. Move us forward from where yes. you are into this next chapter of your life. Yes, Father, I just thank you for uh, your presence that is here with us right here, right now. Lord, I just ask, Father, that your that your liquid grace would be poured into each and every person that's engaging with this um, uh, media today, uh, whether it's the audio or the video. Father, I ask, Lord, that that my voice would get turned down, that your voice would get turned up, Lord, and that the voice of a kind father would begin to resonate from the inside of people and father that the um uh, the disposition of disappointment would be exposed and that people would realize that they have not been robbed of the appointments of god and i feel like that's like a word for somebody it's almost i feel like there's somebody listening and you had the most incredible opportunity in your life and you you passed it up because of bad advice that was given to you and and you think that 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 the door your doorway of destiny is now shut and that is and that is not true uh, you might have said no to a uh, to a, a past opportunity but i would just say hey remember not the former things why because god is doing a new thing and there's a wonderful i see wonder i see these beautiful um, golden doors of destiny that are open for people. Uh, if you'll just uh, have have the courage to look forward to see His face and uh, and to say yes to Jesus. And if 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 this is resonating with you right now, I would just encourage you just to say yes, Lord. Whatever you want to do in my life, I say yes, Lord. I know you want to use me. I know you want to uh, reveal your beauty and your glory and your justice and your peace, your mercy through me. And so I just say, yes, my answer, Lord, I, I don't know what you're even going to show me yet, <laughs> but I, I give you my, my, my answer in advance. My answer is, I love you. I trust you. My answer is yes. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. We agree. We agree. When you were praying then, Darren, I just kept feeling that Jesus is going to release to you guys the realm of rest, wow. real, real deep rest and peace and um, fill you with shalom, fill you from the inside, restore you with shalom, and that what will come out of you will be peace, tangible, the tangible substance of the one who is peace, permeating you and surrounding you and causing drama and pain and uh, just turmoil around you to be brought into rest you know like jesus said in the when he was in the boat in the storm with the disciples and they thought they were going to die and they were going to drown he said peace and but he released the substance of his peace and, and the storm collapsed and there was peace i feel like that's what he's going to do with your life right now he's he's going to bring you into such an internal place of peace and you're going to begin to release that realm everywhere you go and that's part of heaven's justice bringing forth peace into the storms all the storms that are raging around you there's they're going to collapse and be deactivated de-energized as the government of God, the one who is government, just re releases effortlessly out of your life as you rest in him and enjoy him and become the fullness of who you are as a supernatural person. <laughs> Amen. Oh, Darren, you're just amazing. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you for writing this incredibly important book. And we love you. Yeah, and Liz, thank you for being such a superhero. For for I mean, talk about a restorer of shalom and peace, a releaser of hope. Uh, you so walk in this. And every time I get to have just a conversation with you, I feel like I receive such an infilling of that peace and of that hope. Uh, so Liz, we love you. We love your ministry. God bless you. Oh, thank you so much. They are treasures. They're your words are treasures to my heart. And guys, thank you for being with us today. I know you will have been super encouraged. Have the most amazing week. And I look forward to being with you next week. God bless. Over 20 years ago now, I had a life-transforming experience with Jesus. He enabled me to begin to walk with him 
in a supernatural way where a lifestyle of encounters became my normal. And that's why I wrote Reflecting God. I have literally poured out into this book all of the keys that I have learned down the years on how you walk this kind of life with him. I encourage you to pick up a copy of Reflecting God from wherever you buy your books.